Okay, moving on to the team that I have finishing in seventh in the Big East. That would be Travis Steele and his Xavier Musketeers. And it is going to be a very fascinating season for Xavier, in my opinion, because I think that out of all of the coaches in the Big East, Travis Steele does have a decent amount of pressure on him. And he has won 19 games two years in a row, his first two years as the head coach of Xavier. And I feel like when a lot of people look at those numbers, they're going to say to themselves, all right, that's not... But if you looked into the numbers a little more deeply and you looked into the situation with a little more context, you would realize that this was the first two-year stretch where Xavier hasn't won at least 20 games uh, since 1982, which is a little concerning. And I still believe that Travis Steele inherited a very good roster when he took over for Chris Mack when he left, left for Louisville. And still, Travis Steele hasn't, hasn't been able to lead Xavier to an NCAA tournament appearance. And last year, to be honest, Xavier lost in the first round of the Big East tournament to DePaul before it got shut down. And you guys know DePaul was not a very good team last year. So Xavier last year, odds are, was not going to even make the NCAA tournament. But last season, right, Xavier was, pin it, was uh, picked to finish finish third in the Big East preseason poll and 17th by Ken Palm. They stumbled to an 8-10 conference record and finished tied 6th in the Big East and 45th in Ken Palm. There was probably no way Xavier was going to make the NCAA tournament and including they lost three straight to end the season, including, as I mentioned, the opening round loss to DePaul. And when I look at Travis Steele, so far it's been two subpar seasons under his belt, and I do think the pressure is on for him to start producing. When you look at who Xavier has lost, they do lose Najee Marshall. He was their best player, and I think he's a guy that's going to play in the NBA, plus Tyreek Jones, who was one of the more underrated big men in all of college basketball last year. He had started as a freshman and wasn't great when he started but he got better and better and better as his career went on. And also Quentin Gooden, he graduates, which as crazy as this may sound, even though Quentin Gooden, like Tyreek Jones, was a guy that started multiple years in uh, Xavier's backcourt. When you look at Quentin Gooden, he was one of the more disappointing players in all of the country last year. And I think this season, when you look at more minutes for Kai Kai Tandy, that could be better for Xavier as opposed to playing Goodwin. Uh, Scruggs and Tandy are set to be the stars of Travis Steele's backcourt. Each of them, I think, are poised to assume a bigger role this season with Gooden gone and Najee Marshall gone. And I do really like Paul Scruggs a lot. I like his game. I think he's a strong guard who could really handle point guard duties or Tandy, whoever Travis Steele wants. Uh, he's also a guy that could really uh, bully smaller opponents. He has struggled with turnovers in each of his first three seasons at Xavier, but he has shot over 37% from three over the past two seasons, and Scruggs was one of the more valuable players to Xavier last year on both sides of the floor. And when you look at... Uh, Xavier last year when they lost their three final games to end the season Paul Scruggs didn't play in any of those three games so that really shows me how important he was to this Xavier squad and I think this year when you look at it Paul Scruggs is going to be a senior and he should be the undisputed leader of this team with Najee Marshall gone and pace the Musketeers in scoring especially when playing off the ball because that's where I think he's at his best this year's group for Travis Steele is pretty big because it's finally being led by the guys that he brought in, like Zach Fremantle, like Kai Kai Tandy, like Dewan Odom, the freshman, like CJ Wilcher, like Kobe Jones, and those are five really young, impressive players. But they need those guys to turn into really good players, or else Travis Steele may be in trouble. We saw that with Demir Bishop last year. Just because you are a good recruit, that really does not guarantee anything. Um, you have to work hard and play well in order to contribute, especially in a league as tough as the Big East. But you have Kai Kai Tandy, who shot the ball very well from deep last year as a freshman. But I think he forced the issue too much off the bounce. Tandy sh should have one of the two starting guard spots locked down when the season starts. And like Paul Scruggs, he is a strong guard who plays in control and uses his speed and muscle to make things happen. And I really do like the way he was playing last season before uh, things got shut down due to the pandemic. I would have been more down on these guys entering the season, but they got some good transfers, including Nate Johnson and Ben Stanley. When you look at Johnson, he's from Gardner-Webb. He averaged 13.5 points per game last year, four rebounds, about an assist. Right now, he's projected to start. And then Ben Stanley, a kid from Hampton, who, albeit it was Hampton, did average 22 points per game last year.
year and seven rebounds. And once again, I'm not expecting these guys to come in and be the stars on this Xavier team, but they have to come in and at least know a role, produce a role, and score about 10 to 12 points per game. That's why I believe Travis Steele brought them in. Obviously, playing in the Big East is much harder than playing in a mid-major league of your choice. So, um, you know, the Big East is tough, and it's going to be really on this uh Xavier team led by their core group of guys to get the job done. They also have two sit-out guys in Adam Kunkel and Brian Griffin. Griffin may play, still no word on him yet. He's a D2 transfer who I think is going to really replace uh, everything left behind by Tyreek Jones. He led Division Two in rebounding last year, pulling down 14 and a half rebounds per game and scored 19.6 points per game. And Xavier has had success before going to the D2 ranks, taking Zach Hankins two years ago, and he was one of the more underrated players in college basketball, one of the surprise players in college basketball. If you remember his Hanky McSpanky nickname, I hope uh, Zach Hankins is doing well. But there is enough talent here to be a tournament team. But to be honest, I just haven't loved the look of Travis Steele's first two Xavier teams. The fact that they've blown the last two teams um, has been a concern because I think even though this Xavier team on paper does look like an NCAA tournament team to me, right? The reason why I'm not going to pick them to make the NCAA tournament because each of the last two seasons, Xavier has had a team that is talented, more talented than this one. And that's an issue because those past two teams with Najee Marshall, with Tyreek Jones, with Paul Scruggs, those teams were not able to make the NCAA tournament, which is a huge, huge problem. And the fact that those teams couldn't make it, why would I have any confidence at all in picking these guys to make it? They've blown the last two seasons, and I'm not going to pick them to make the NCAA tournament under Travis Steele's watches, watch until I see it for myself. Steele's first team was Hankins, Najee Marshall, Scruggs, Quentin Gooden, who was coming off a great season. They had people like Ryan Wellich, and almost everyone had them as a tournament team that season. I believe they were ranked in most people's preseason top 25. And then Najee, Scruggs, Jones, top three last year. That team should have been better. And the fact that they really were on pace to miss the NCAA tournament, that's not good if you're a fan of Xavier. And we will see this season with the possible breakouts of guys like Kai Kai Tandy and Zach Fremantle. They do have some good young talent in the program, which I guess if you're a Xavier fan is a good thing. But right now, I am not trying to overreact. I understand it's only been two seasons. I don't understand how you could have any confidence in Travis Steele at all to lead your team to the promised land or just even better than expected. I think that would be the goal right now for me if I was a Xavier fan going into next season. Let's just try to make the NCAA tournament. Let's try to finish better than people expected us to do so. And I do believe that would take some pressure off Travis Steele. And there's some good young talent here. So um, I'm confident both of those two guys could take a big step forward. You know, I think Fremantle will be in for a bigger role. I think Tandy will be in for a bigger role. But how about Jason Carter? I want to see what he, what he looks like because they need him to be better. But Playing Tandy Scruggs, Johnson, Carter, and Free does provide you with solid spacing. And I'll say that. Maybe Ben Stanley, the transfer from Hampton, starts at the four due to him, you know, ranking ninth in the country in scoring last year. That was super impressive. But once again, albeit it was at Hampton, playing in the Big East is just a different animal. We saw that with James Daniel uh, of Howard a couple years ago. He led, uh, I believe, led the country in scoring in the MEAC, came to Tennessee and averaged like 10 points a game. So we'll see what happens there. Because he hasn't uh, ever played around this good of a supporting cast. How much can Xavier rely on on defense with no more Najee Marshall and no more Tyreek Jones? Because this Xavier team is less talented than any of the teams we spoke about at the top. Their coaching is most suspect by far out of anyone in this group in the Big East that I've been talking about. And that includes UConn, who I have third, Seton Hall fourth, um, and Providence fifth, Marquette sixth. I feel confident picking Xavier as the weakest team out of that group. And coaching has a lot to do with it. Travis Steele did inherit legitimate players from Chris Max last year at Xavier. And overall, his tenure has been disappointing. Missing the NCAA tournament wouldn't be this big cause for alarm for me if the expectations in the preseason were not to make it. Make it and if they lost a lot, kind of like Virginia Tech with, when Buzz Williams left. But that really was not the case at all. Having that happen two times in two years at a program where, let's face it, it doesn't happen at all usually, that's a bit concerning. 
Steele needs to get on the right side of the bubble in order to regain that trust for me. Xavier should still be a competitive squad in 2020-2021, despite all of its losses. If Scruggs can successfully ascend into a leadership role and guys like Tandy and Fremantle take jumps in their second years like most people expect, Xavier should be in a position to make the NCAA tournament. However, I don't trust Travis Steele to get the job done. I don't feel confident picking more than three guys on this team to be better than, than anyone could have expected them to. So I'm going to pick Xavier to miss the NCAA tournament. And uh, yeah, just missing it on the wrong side of the bubble. And I do think there's a possibility that Travis Steele loses his job after the season. I'm not a believer in him right now.